been kind of resting and staying back quiet. But Shane, I want you to tell a little bit about yourself and, and tell how you come along the drove and then you've been, you know, as far as Jimmy and Jeremiah. Okay. Uh, first off, my name is Shane, Shane Charles. I've been boxing for a while. I have an amateur uh, background. I've been to several di different gyms. I've lived in different states. I've been all, all over the place. I've seen all kinds of different things. Um, but my final point here is here with Lord Promotions. They're a great group of people. I've trained, I've grown, and I've been with them for a while. And they're an amazing set. And um, that's all I have. And Shane will be fighting on our cards, and like I said, I apologize. He, he called me today and said, I've been sick, and I'll go ahead and be there. And I just have to see him standing out there, and I need to bring him up there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead and bring me a chair. Anybody else have any other questions? Kit. I just wanted to make a clarification. Uh, I'm the sponsor of the J Boxing Club, but Jeremiah is actually founder of J Boxing Club. Yeah. And... started so you all know because here's what happened they're not a USA club they don't have a training session or nothing like that yet okay here's what they do they study boxing they study the history of boxing they've got other kids involved in a class that these two guys have put together down there to study the history of what is going what's went on in Muhammad Ali's life or uh, Sugar Ray Robinson anybody even back in the 40s 50s 60s you know, they're, they're studying that. So they've got a little bit of knowledge about boxing. Hey, some of these guys may go into sports commentating or anything later on, and you, you've got to have the knowledge of that in order to do these things. But I, I'm very proud of what all these gentlemen have done, you know, up here. And ladies. Excuse me. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So that brings me to another question. Um, Life after boxing, we see a lot. We see Freddie Roach. We see, you know, the different major fighters. A lot of them are having issues physically later in life. And I know, I know, because I, I'm also a member of Grove Boxing. Can you want to talk real quick about uh, some of Parkinson's um, training that you have going on? Yes, uh, our LBC chairman, Aaron Sloan, uh, he has a Parkinson program that he is teaching and. We're going to get certified in doing that. Richard Steele, who is a friend of mine, he's been a referee forever. He lives in Las Vegas. He does the same thing. And part of the things that our gyms are going to be getting into in the ABA franchise of the gym that's going to help revenue coming in with you guys, okay? But we all know that in the boxing <laughs> world, what's the toughest thing? Fighters paying dues, you know, things like that. And it is. It's, let's just face the fact. So for a gym owner, he may not get everything done on dues, but for fitness classes and things like that, Parkinson classes, Silver Slippers classes, things that you can work with the uh, retired folks, and actually Medicaid and Medicare will pick up the tab on some of this stuff. And that's what we're going to show these gyms how to do. Hey, it's a different market today. It's not the same old thing that it used to be. And, and you know what, everybody's always told me, hey, look at what kind of clientele that you have in a boxing gym. Well, I'll be honest with you, that, that's, you go to different big cities and that's the thing you may run into. But <clears throat> I've never had that problem with anybody in my gyms of having any problems at all with <coughs> people getting along. We've had a few little skirmishes now and then. I'm sure everybody has that. But all in all, we want to bring forth physical fitness also into the boxing gym so that these guys can start doing some training with ladies and men and earn other income while they're there. You know, that that's part of the whole deal is we want to teach some of these guys, they, they may want to be trainers themselves when they get older, or they may want to get a job in the school system and, and have some type of physical education. They've got something else that goes with it. They've got experience that's already there. Does that answer pretty much your question? Absolutely. I will say this too, one last thing about the school systems. The, the superintendents around in these school systems are great. They actually want to work with people outside of the school. Used to be it was hard to get your foot in the door. We are very fortunate people to live in northeastern Oklahoma, you know, southwest Missouri, uh, northwest Arkansas. It's, 
it's fortunate to live here because we have a great area that we can build this upon. And Grove America has a ton of people in it that love boxing. So we want to bring boxing to this town and make this a boxing town. Anything else before we close up? One last question, Coach. Uh, I've, I've heard rumors in the gym. When's your next fight, Coach? I, I don't know. If, uh, the, the problem that we have with me is I am 50. That's not the problem. I'll fight again. But the problem is, is there's been a new law that went in effect September 14th, and, and anybody over the age of 40 has to have a brain MRI twice a year. And the cost of that is that, you know, it's kind of costly. You can get one done for 800 bucks, and that's before you ever get your, you know, get your license. So those things have to be approved. And, and if I want to do that later on, my wife's shaking her head no, but I may go ahead and do that. Right now, my emphasis is on getting these guys fights. You know, hey, they're the world. They're the next tomorrow, okay, especially this in here. I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of proud of him. He is my boy. And... Uh, we're going to make him the number one 135 pounder around. Okay? No, anybody else that are going to have to go 130 pounds or 140? <laughs> I think I'm going to 135 pounds. <laughs> Anything else before we close up? I'd be nice to just go down the line and hear everybody's favorite fighter. All right, let's hear that. That's a good idea. Whose favorite fighter of past or present? Starting with Daniel. Well, my favorite fighter is nice. I remember I started watching boxing is from Honor Marcus, he's from Mexico City. I think he has the best style in the world. Well, that's what I think. Hey, man, bro. Uh, my favorite fighter of all time is Julio Cesar Chavez. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people know him. And then also uh, probably uh, Eric Morales, another great one. Hey, can I say something? Sure. Mexican fighters are bad dudes, let me tell you. <laughs> They are. I'm just telling you sure that, that Mexicans can fight. Go. Cool. My favorite fighter is a kickboxer, and his name is Smoking Joe Schilling. And he's from uh, California. They call it the yard. They built it in a uh, OLA gel compound. <coughs> and that dude kicks the hell out of people, and he beats the snot out of them. He's one of the top American kickboxers. And, uh, you know, he's the reason. I had nine amateur boxing fights and three amateur kickboxing fights, and I'm undefeated in kickboxing. Um, Joe Schilling and Can't Stop Crazy, they're some bad dudes, and I want to go train with them one day. Honestly, probably Tommy. Tommy Morrison and Earl Wright, Muhammad Ali also. Current right now, my favorite fighter is probably Triple G. Mm -hmm. I got two, two guys I watch the most. Uh, I find left and right handed, so my favorite <coughs> right handed fighter, hands down, Roberto Duran. My favorite left handed fighter, Marvin Hagler. I think he's. I think he's looking at me like he wants to know what my favorite fighter is. You know, he just said them. I have no other ones. I got one other one. I, 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 my favorite guys are the Fab Four from the 80s. And anybody that really knows who the Fab Four was, that's Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran, yeah, and you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, you'll throw him in there, and Pepino Cuevas. <laughs> Actually, Pepino Cuevas is, was taken by Wilfred Benitez. But <clears throat> Roberto Duran is my hero. And Marvin Hagler is probably number two. No, you get Tommy Hearns. And Tommy Hearns. Tommy Hearns is a, he's a great one, ain't no doubt. Five-time world champion. Jeremiah. Me, I have a couple. Uh like Pam, get him to go up to Triple G. He's my favorite big time star. But another one of my favorites hasn't made it yet, and that's Rusty. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would probably pick uh, Cesar Chavez and uh, maybe Triple G. I think they're one of the best, best out there. That's, that's yeah. about it. I still think my name is not a kid. favorite fighter of all time was Sanchez. I know his career was kind of short. You know, he passed Little away. Sanchez? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Manuel, he's my second one, and uh, Canelo's got to be my third one. So, uh, you know, that's one of my
Uh, I have to agree with the first two guys up there. My favorite ones uh, all time is Abominable uh, Marquez, uh, Julius or Chavez. But uh, I think right now, I like uh, Leo Santa Cruz. I don't know if a lot of people know him, but yeah, good yeah, really good little guy. And that's about it. <laughs> guys took my two guys. No, yeah. So I didn't know you guys were brothers from another mother. Oh, yeah. Apparently, Roberto Duran is my, my he's Hero. who I watched when I first started boxing. I didn't even know how to box until I started watching this guy. But he fights with his heart on his sleeve, with his nasty. He's got defense, but he's just quick, constantly putting pressure on you. And it's always coming right back, even if he gets attacked. He fought for three decades, multiple world, world titles. He's just my favorite, super crazy. And, and Hagler is just like a better, you know, almost like a more controlled version of him, just intelligent, and just really loved it. But I love that era, that used era is my yeah. favorite. Absolutely, real fighters, um, just uh, really fighting. Not so much <coughs> with intelligence and with tenacity. You don't get that a whole lot. It's both more the package like that time. So that's what I want to be like. That's what I try to be like. That's what I always, when it's fight time, that's, that's what I always think about is Duran. <laughs> <laughs> My guy is Sugar Ray Lynn. He's slippery, he's a beautiful boxer. I've watched him forever. Can't, don't fight much like him, but you know, I think he's a beautiful boxer. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Um, I'd have to say that my favorite boxer, he's not, he's not really an old guy, but my favorite boxer from the past is Mickey Ward. I just, uh, just like him as a person. I don't really care if you won like <coughs> titles or not. I just like him. And then currently, if there's a guy that I watch just to study, it's Triple G. And if there's a guy that I'm really rooting for, it's uh, Deontay Wilder. Uh, I think you've already mentioned uh, the classic Floyd Money Mayweather. I think everybody knows him. Uh, I like him, but I also like Prince Nassim. Uh, he's more old school. I believe he's like 43 now. And he swelled up. But I like those two guys. Oh, I'm going to do, you know, the, the, the cliche local hometown guy, Tommy Morrison, always, you know, number one. Uh, currently, there's two, and they're both Tommy bastards. One's Triple G, and the other's Lomachenko. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some Russians. <laughs> Yeah, come on, that's my favorite. Y'all ain't even gonna talk about that. Yeah. There you go. He's the man. Yeah. That is the man. Yeah. Eight time world champion. Yeah. Call it so loud. Yeah. He knows. He's got it. Yes, sure. heck yeah. <laughs> Yes, I really like that. That was good. Let, let me ask another thing that's along the same lines. Every month, the American Boxing Association honors one boxer. That's the uh, it's an American. It's a salute to an American boxing champion. And every month, we take one person that held the world title that was an American citizen, and we'd like to to honor them. And so, I'd like it if we could come to a consensus on November's boxing champion. Who should we honor this month? How about we just take a vote here among the yeah. table? Uh, any particular guy that you guys can have <laughs> American champion? Wild American. He, be, it, it, he beats the burn to a pole. This, we're talking about, you're talking Past about a champion. modern day one? It can be, it, it can be modern, it can be, it can, it, we've even honored, um, Jimmy the Mack Truck, because we believe that um, uh, he, he won the uh, Tommy Morrison tournament or whatever it was at one time. Uh, at one time, we even honored Jimmy the Mack Truck, but we've uh, also done um, Tommy Morrison was in October. And so it, it can be someone who uh, is up and coming. It could be someone who is a legend, or it could be someone who's currently at the top. I'd say Crawford. Yep. Let's put him on there. Here's why. He, he's a local guy, in my opinion. Would you not say that, Dallas? You know, we we want to support him, and he's a bad dude. Okay. So let's put him on there. Is everybody up for that, vote wise? Yeah. I mean, I got a nomination actually. Who? I was gonna nominate Rock. Yeah. Well, my reasoning. My reasoning is, I went and watched. I fought on the same card in September 6th or 9th, whatever it was. Watch Rocky have a, it's a tough fight. You, did you win that fight? Or? I lost that fight. But it was a tough fight. Yeah. And then to go to St. Louis, 
not very soon after, go to a guy's hometown and win, that, that says a lot. That's Man, a, that does say a lot. That's coming off of, you know, that's, that's a good. tells a whole lot. That's a guy that's with a too. To go walk in someone's hometown and, and to, to beat them at their, their house, I think that that's just my nomination. I mean, I'm whoever you guys, it's a democracy, so. But I got rocks, my nomination. <laughs> Deontay Wilder, Rocky, and what was the other one? Karen Crawford. Okay. Let's take a vote right now. Karen Crawford, raise your hand. Give us a count on that, guys. Rocky Gonzalez. Deontay Wilder. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All, right. All right, if you guys want Rocky to be in there this year, you're going to have to get on the poll that's on Facebook and vote for him. Okay. I got to say one thing, please. Sure. This is awesome, guys, because right here you just showed that we support our own people. Getting, supporting him is the best thing to start today is supporting ourselves. Yep. Okay, that's good stuff. Yep. Um, that is. And I'm glad. that he went through in St. Louis, and that was a tough, tough deal. Good. It was a tough fight. The, the one in Muskogee was tough. Yeah, the one in Muskogee against yeah, Alfred was, a, was tough. That was a bruise. And, and you <coughs> fought <coughs> Alfred Williams twice now, right? Yeah. Or three times. I fought him once, and I won. It was a tough fight. And uh, they wanted to fight again, and I told them, yeah, let's do it, you know. And uh, second fight, you know, I didn't come out with the de decision. So, uh, you know, I took a loss. It was my first loss, but... Um, to me, it felt like a loss, and uh, I decided to, you know, go for a risk and uh, take whatever comes at me. And I, I went to St. Louis, and uh, they offered me to fight a guy who was undefeated, and uh, I took it. And uh, I dropped, I ran through him like nothing, and uh, it was just I wanted to prove myself, you know, and prove everybody that a loss doesn't affect nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's one thing we want to clarify with the ABA. You know, sometimes, you know, you get in the WBA, WBC, world rankings and things like that, you get a loss on your record, you're gone. Unless you're just a great one, you know. Well, here, here's the deal. A loss on our record sometimes <coughs> won't hurt us. You know, we've got to build it. This man has already done that. He's already took that loss and, and wiped it away. The only thing that we're going to do over the next probably year I'm sure you guys are going to want to rematch with Al. That's right. You know. That's one of the things that got Evander Holyfield on our side is he was really excited about people not not being so um, in, enabled. Uh, well, the losses scare people, and they won't fight. And uh, it's really crippled the industry with people who won't go and fight someone. And Evander Holyfield uh, is really behind us because he says he wants to see the sport change to where people aren't so crippled by the fear of losing. Very good. I mean, you've been fighting for a while, and you haven't had a loss. You're not doing it. And you want to be able to survive. Not easy. Not a whole lot of people can do this. Woo! I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. I'd like to thank all the gyms. I'd like to thank all the people that have helped. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's a great thing to have friends just like you guys that you can call on and depend on. Okay? And that's a must in today's world. Thank you all once again. We'd like to say good night for Jimmy Joe's promotions and the ABA and USA Boxing. Thank you all.